In this short lecture, we'll look at linearizing nonlinear differential equations. Now, what do you mean by linearization? Let's look at this figure right here. Now, you have this green curve, which essentially represents a nonlinear function of x, y, and many variables. Uh, you have the tangent plane to this function at a point x0, y0, what have you. So the original dynamics x dot is given by this nonlinear function. Linearization is the process of finding the tangent plane ft and writing the uh, dynamic equations in a small range around this equilibrium point that is delta x dot equal to f of t x y many variables here. So you could have u, what, what have you, so basically it increases the degree of the uh, system. Now let's look at a concrete example and go uh, through the process of step by step deriving the linear differential equations from the nonlinear differential equations. This is our system. Uh, it's a two variable system, x double dot equal to sine x y squared plus d y dot equal to x divided by y squared plus 1 plus u. Here u is the input and d is a constant. So let's make the identification. The first nonlinear uh, um, function f1 is this. The second nonlinear function f2 is this. So therefore we can write the dynamic equation as x double dot equal to f1 y double dot y dot equal to f2. The first step in uh, deriving the linear equations is to write the equilibrium equations. Given an equilibrium point x0, y0, u0, in this case we have three variables here. What does it mean to have an equilibrium one? It means that the system is uh, stationary, then all derivatives are zero. And that's what we write x0 or x0 double dot equal to zero and y0 dot equal to zero at the equilibrium point x0, y0, u0. You can have in general an infinite number of uh, equilibrium points. Equilibrium points are also called operating points by the way. If we substitute x0, y0 and u0 in the original dynamic equations and set them to zero, these are the equations that we get. These are the equilibrium equations. The second step is to write the perturbed equations. So what do you mean by perturbed equations? What we do is we go to the equilibrium point and disturb each variable by a small amount delta. So x is disturbed from the equilibrium point x0 with delta x, y with delta y, u with delta u. Now we, in, in order to do this we also need the second derivative of x and the first derivative of y. And we just differentiate the first and second equation and this is what we get. And we know that at equilibrium, x0 double dot equal to 0, y0 dot equal to 0. Therefore, x double dot equal to delta x double dot, y dot equal to delta y dot. Now we substitute all of these into the original differential equations to get this, these two equations. So all I've done is replaced x, no, x with x0 plus delta x, y with y0 plus delta y, u with u0 plus delta u and the substitute for the x double dot with this equation here and y dot with this equation here. The third step is to linearize nonlinear terms and for that we use the Taylor series expansion. So what the Taylor series expansion says is if you have a function f of x, y and z, how many of our variables, x, f of x naught plus delta x, y naught plus delta y and other things here is approximate, approximately equal to the function evaluated at the point x0, y0, more variables here. Then you take the partial with respect to the first variable and evaluate it at the uh, operating point times delta x plus partial of f with respect to y, uh, evaluate it at the operating point times delta y and if you have more variables you keep doing that. So you just take the first partial not the second, just the first partial, the first term which is a constant term and then the first partial. 
If we do that, we can write an approximation for the first nonlinear equation or the perturbed nonlinear equation as so, for the second perturbed nonlinear equation as so. Now I'll leave you to figure out how to do these uh, partials in this case in this case. Uh, that's why you need to know your differentiation by hand very well. So let me go ahead and identify. So in this case, this whole thing here, this whole thing here is f of x naught plus delta x, y naught plus delta y, and u naught plus delta u. This term here if it's, is f of x naught, y naught, u naught this term cos x0 y0 squared is partial of f with respect to x and this term here sine of x0 times 2 times y0 is partial of f with respect to y evaluated of course at the operating point x0 y0 u0 uh, next what we do is substitute the nonlinear terms in the perturbed equations and that's what we do it's so my perturbed equations i just took took out the nonlinear term and substituted the uh, linearized uh, term. Same thing with the uh, delta y dot, linearized terms. And the final step is to substitute the equilibrium equations. From the equilibrium equations, we know that these two terms are zero, that is sine x naught times y naught squared plus d equal to zero and x naught divided by y naught squared plus one plus u naught equal to zero. And when we do that, this is what we get. Uh, you have to be careful when you derive these. And if you get any term that is a multiple of, for example, delta x, delta y into your final equations, you are wrong. If you get a constant term without a delta x or delta y, then you are wrong. So that's how you would check if your uh, derivations are right. So these are the final dynamic equations. This is how the system behaves in the neighborhood of the operating point x0, y0, u0. That's the end of this short lecture.